So inverse functions. There's several different ways that we can look at inverse functions. Uh, the first thing that we're going to look at here is we're going to talk about it from an ordered pair perspective. So if we have the ordered pair A, B, A being the X value, B being the Y value, um, then the inverse function, all you do is you switch the X and Y coordinates. Okay, so the inverse function would have the point B, A. So that's one way that you can look at inverse functions. Uh, so if we have these points, 2, negative 3, negative 4, 8, 0, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 1, then its inverse would have the points negative 3, 2, 8, negative 4, negative 3, 0, and negative 1, negative 4. So it just switches the x and y coordinates there. Okay? <clears throat> um, now, we can talk about a special type of function. It's called a one-to-one -one function. A one-to-one -one function exists when the function's inverse is also a function. That means every x is paired with a unique y, and every y is uh, paired with a unique x. So, uh, you know that a function, every x can only have one y. Okay? But, think for example of the function x squared. Okay? The function x squared. Uh, can more than one x have the same y value? If your function is x squared, can more than one x have the same y value? Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Okay, so let's think about it. Uh, what do y'all think about it? You said it. it would pass the vertical line test. It would not pass something we call the horizontal line test. Okay? So, let me write down what I'm talking about here, okay? If our function is y equals x squared, when x is, let's just say, uh, positive or negative 3, we get the same y value, right? We get a y value of 9. Now, x squared is a function. x squared passes the vertical line test, but its inverse function is not an actual function. It would just be a relation. It would not be a function because it would not pass the vertical line test. If we switch the x's and y's, we would have one x that has two y values. Okay? Uh, so x squared is not a one-to-one -one function unless we were to restrict it to an x. If we said, well, only consider positive x values or only consider negative x values. Then we could call the one to one function. <clears throat> um, but yes, we do talk about uh, in order to be one to one, it has to pass the vertical line test, which I mean says that the what you're looking at is a function. F of x is a function. But it also has to pass the horizontal line test. And if it passes the horizontal line test, then that means its inverse is a function. Okay, the vertical line test says that what you're looking at, the function you're looking at is a function. The horizontal line test says that its inverse is a function. So x squared, the way it is, is not one to one. Unless we say, okay, well, forget about the negative x values. Then you're good. Then you are one to one. Okay, so speaking of one to one, let's look at the example of just the points, the coordinate points that I gave you up here. Uh, 2, negative 3, negative 4, 8, 0, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 1. Would the inverse of that Is 
not even a function to begin with. That is just a relation, and its inverse is just a relation, okay? Uh, a relation means that you do have a coordination between your x and y values, uh, but it's not a function if you have x's that have multiple y's. Um, so it's a relation and it's inverse, it's just a relation. Neither one of those are functions. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we can look at the points to talk about inverse relationships, which is switch x and y. What we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on uh, the equations. We're going to look at the, the equations of these functions and find their inverses and, and whatnot using their equations. Okay, so uh, what I have there on the next slide is. Uh, the technical mathematical definition of an inverse, or actually this is of a one-to-one -one function, okay? Um, so if you have f of x being a one-to-one -one function, it has a domain, let's just call it d, a range that we call r, then the inverse function, we use this notation right here, it looks like an exponent, okay? f with a negative one as an exponent of x. Uh, that is the inverse notation. Now, it does that is not truly an exponent. Okay, you can't get rid of the negative uh, one by moving it to the denominator because it's not an exponent. That is function notation for the inverse function. Um, notice that it says that it has a domain of r and a range of d. Well, if we're switching all of our x's and y's, then our domains and ranges are going to switch places. That should be pretty much makes sense. <clears throat> but we use this notation. Um, we can look at it this way. F inverse of D equals A if F of A equals B. Again, just switching those X and Y values. I know it's a little confusing with the letters, so that's why I have these numbers. Okay. If your inverse has the point negative four seven, then your original will have the point seven negative four. Just switching those places with the X and Y values. And what I have there at the bottom is what I just said a minute ago. That's not a negative exponent. Okay, it is not a negative exponent. Um, that is the function notation for inverse. All right, so um, basic steps for finding the inverse of a function algebraically. Usually you're going to start with f of x is the notation. So just go ahead and mark that out. Say that it's y. You're going to switch x and y. Now I put switch in quotations because Sometimes you'll have multiple x's, so it's more that you replace all your x's with y's and your equation y with x. Uh, but switching is just easier uh, word to use. So you're going to solve for y, that's where the variation is going to be. Depends on the function, what you're going to use to solve for y. And then at the very, very end, a lot of people like to forget this, but notation is very important, guys. At the very end, you need to replace that final y with the inverse notation. I'm going to insist upon that. I will count off if you don't do it. Okay? So be careful. Don't be lazy on me. Alright, so let's start with what type of function is this, first of all? Boolean. What? Boolean. 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 No. Boolean. Boolean. We've heard about it. This semester, what do we call this type of function? There are variables in the top and the bottom. Oh, what's the one that I Like a rational. Thank you. Okay. It's a rational function. Okay. This is a rational function. So let's find out what the inverse of a rational function is. All right. So what I was saying was you're always going to start with f of x. So I'm just going to mark that out real quick and I'm going to put a y there so that when I move on to step two, when I switch x and y, then I'm going to have x is equal to y over y plus 1. Okay, now we have to solve for y. Right now we have a y in the numerator and we have a y in the denominator. So the way that we're going to handle this is we are going to begin by getting the y out of the denominator. The only way to get it out of the denominator is to multiply both sides by y. Okay. 
uh, go ahead and that's going to make the y plus 1 cancel on the right side. We need to go ahead and distribute this x. So we've got x times y plus x times 1, which is just x, and that's equal to y. Now we're trying to solve for y, so it makes sense if we had y on one side um, as much as possible. So I'm going to, you can't divide by y, okay? Um, I'm going to subtract this xy from both sides. So we've got x is equal to y minus xy. Now I have two y's, I can't put them together, okay? but what I can do is I can factor out a y. Okay? I can factor out a y there. I can take a y out of the y and I can take a y out of the minus x y. And I'm almost there at this point because to get y by itself, all I need to do is divide by the 1 minus x. So that says my inverse function is x over 1 minus x. x over 1 minus x is my inverse function. Now, how can we check this? We have several different things that we can do. Uh, I don't know how much experience you have with inverse functions in the past. You may have seen them, you may not have. Uh, go to your y equals, type in your original function, into your y1, so x over x plus 1, make sure you put parentheses around the x plus 1, and then type in what we said is the inverse, x over 1 minus x, make sure the 1 minus x is in parentheses. And since we talked about the inverse, just switching x and y values, then I'm going to go to my table, and I'm going to see if I can find some whole number points here to compare, okay? Um, zero, but switching zero to zero still gives you zero and zero, so that, that is one thing to check, though. Uh, if the original goes through zero, zero, then your inverse will still go through zero, zero, so we're good there. Um, the other thing that I see is that for my original, I have the point negative two, positive two. So that means for the inverse, I should have the point positive two, Negative 2, and I do. Um, for the original, I have negative 3, positive 1.5. Well, I can't really check out because that's fraction. Um, there are other points that you can check. Let me see if I can find another whole number here. Eh, they're not going to be whole numbers. Um, but it, usually, if, if at least one of those checks out, you're okay. We can also look at the graph. Uh, there's the original, and there's the inverse. Now, this is a little bit harder to see, but some of you are rather visual people. Uh, since we're switching x's and y's, then another relationship between inverse functions is that they are reflections over the line y equals x. So I just graphed the line y equals x in addition to that. So you can kind of tilt your head so that y over x is straight up and down. Um, you can kind of see that those are mirror images of each other over that line. Uh, like I said, that one's a little bit harder to see, especially with the rational functions. It would be easier to see with some of the other ones that we do. But those are a couple of things that you can do to, to check uh, your inverse functions. <coughs> see if when you plug in an x value into the original, um, whatever y value you get out, plug that into the other one and see if you get that x. Hmm? Sound like an artist? <laughs>